Hey guys, um, I want to do just a quick update video on this Hewing T1 Ranger VTOL. Um, I am getting a few questions and I've made some tweaks and I just want to make sure I have those um, tweaks out there and public so that uh, those people that are working on a build um, get on the right track. Um, I made a couple changes um, to the build. Uh, minor, but um, I did have an issue with um, uh, the hover not behaving very well. It kind of fell out of the sky a couple of times. One time recovered, and another time it crashed. And um, I found a couple problems, and they've been resolved. And yesterday I went flying, and it hovered perfectly for a long period of time in the wind, held position. It was doing great. So. Uh, I just want to go over what those problems were. Um, I, I'm not sure actually specifically. I did. I made like five changes, and and they all seem to make sense to me. Um, but I can't point to exactly which one fixed the problem. Um, so beginning with the tail motor ESC, it's now outside. I had it inside previously. It's now outside, and I think it was over. It could, it's possible it was overheating in here. There's just not very good cooling in there, so I moved it outside. And in theory, I could come up with some way to use bullet connectors to make it detachable, um, but I didn't bother. So right now, I just have it soldered on, um, and I did add a capacitor to all three ESCs. That's the second thing I changed. Um, you can't see them really on the under. So, well, actually you can. Um, it's kind of buried in the foam. Um, uh, it's the best I could do. Um, but I think the ESCs are uh, helpful um, for this build since in quad mode, in particular, it's going to um, require consistent uh, current to maintain a stable hover. So I think that that's important. The other thing I did is I, believe it or not, I cleaned up the wiring. Now this may not look very clean, but I can actually pull some things out like the receiver and the um, uh, USB connector. And now you can actually see the board down there. Um, the point is that by moving the ESC outside, I had more space in here and I was able to, I thought initially that I couldn't fit the H743 wing board in here in the direction of the fuse. And I ended up turning it sideways, cramming it in there without the PDB. Um, and the effect was that it was really wedged in there as if it was hard mounted. And what I've done instead is by turning it this way, it's actually mounted on Velcro, which gives it a little bit of vibration dampening. And that, it turns out, according to um, uh, a guy I spoke to, Steve Carlson, who who's, who's has a lot of experience with, with VTOLs, um, uh, who designed that 3D printed uh, VTOL, he, he found that um, vibrations could affect the gyros and throw off the hover. So I wanted to make sure that this is not very secure. It's actually a little bit uh, softly mounted. It's obviously going to move very well with the plane. It's not loose, but it's got a little bit of vibration um, dampening uh, uh, by using the, the Velcro. Maybe there's another way to, to, um, to accomplish the same thing, but uh, I found that that, um, that has done a good job. Um, the last thing is I discovered I don't know if you can see it here, but you can kind of see it that there's a little, the, the propeller 
was striking the nacelle right at the top here. Um, it didn't happen on this side. This side's clean. But on this side, it was striking it. And that will only have, it doesn't happen in vertical mode, but it happens in vertical mode when it's yawing because these motors are designed to pivot slightly beyond vertical in order to accomplish vectored yaw. So I didn't catch that during the build. And I think that that was also, I had two failures. <clears throat> Two failures during hover. One where the tail um, kind of failed and the, the nose dipped, the nose rose. Um, so it fell tail first. So that was possibly because that ESC had a problem. Um, uh, maybe it was overheating. But then I also had a problem where it fell nose first. And this one I think was caused by the prop hitting the nacelle. So it's really important to mechanically not allow that to happen. I'm going to show you really quickly how to how to tune that. So let me just connect um, the <clears throat> stabilize this phone somehow. There we go. Um, connect the board to the computer. cheat here and not do a screen recording. We're just going to film the screen with the phone. Hopefully you can see it. Make sure I have this thing properly connected. I use parallels and sometimes I have to... Okay, there we go. Connect. Um, let me plug in a battery. I've got my transmitter turned on. Okay. So, first of all, let's wait for this initial, wait for the board to initialize. I have the sound turned off on this buzzer, I think. Okay, so let's see. If I go to forward flight mode, there we go. Those things are moving to the forward position. And if I move back to um, vertical mode, they're in the vertical position. Now, notice that they are, you can't really tell from the video, but they're perfectly vertical. Um, I did my best um, visually to, I, I don't know that they necessarily have to be 100%, uh, you know, 90 degrees because the flight controller is going to adjust um, for that, but um, they're pretty close to 90 degrees. Now, there is a setting, a very kind of important setting, um, called, I'm just going to the full parameter list here, and I'm going to search for yaw angle. And I don't know if you can see it, but it's called Q tilt yaw angle 10 degrees. What that means is the rotor will move 10 degrees past vertical. Now, I can test what that position will be if I just set this to zero. So set that to zero, and I'm going to write params, and you're going to watch the servo. I'm going to write, hit write params now, and, and you saw it shift. So now, both servos, both tilt rotors, are slightly angled back, roughly 10 degrees. And it's at this setting that you need to make sure that the propeller doesn't strike the nacelle because this is the maximum reverse uh, tilt that you're going to get. And in my case, that second one was hitting the nacelle 
previously until I fixed it. So once you fix that, or you test for that, then you make sure and come back here and set this to 10 degrees. And then you'll see the, as soon as I click right, they shift back to vertical. And that's how they are able to, the, the, the VTOL is able to maintain yaw. Um, each motor tilts back slightly um, independently to, um, you know, to achieve yaw. Um, I want to also mention, um, I didn't go through this in the, um, uh, in my previous video, but you do need to, um, you know, for, for the tilt motors right and left, you will need to tweak the minimum and maximum so that you get each tilt rotor into that vertical position. And also important that when you're in the forward flight position, that you don't push those servos too far. You want to be, so for instance, if I, if I put this in the forward position, you see this servo moved up to 1979. Now, you wanna make sure that this number, 1979, is the lowest number that achieves that the motor in that position. You don't wanna go too high and have the servo working hard to constantly be pulling that motor into the forward position. You want it to just get there and stop because otherwise you're overworking that servo and it can overheat and fail. So that's kind of an important uh, thing to keep in mind. Um, the other thing I just wanted to mention is I did go over, um, I did change my flight modes. I mentioned how you can't um, have more than six flight modes in my previous video, but that's not actually true. Um, I realized that you can actually set switches to be flight modes. So you can have one channel, channel five in my case, which is my flight mode switch. I set this to my six position switch. So by default, it starts off in Q stabilized. Since I can't really pick out the different positions very easily with my finger during flight, I just set the rest of them to loiter. I have auto tune, which I haven't tested yet. And then I have the, the Q land at the end here. And there are three more modes that I wanna make sure I have. So I set, and those modes are uh, manual, um, return to launch, and fly-by-wire A. So I, I, the way I configured those is if you come here to config and user params, here you can set various channels. I set channel seven, eight, and 10 to be additional flight modes. So now seven is fly-by-wire A, eight is manual, and 10 is RTL. And I also have an arm switch and I have a lost plane sound on another switch. Um, so with that, I'm able to achieve additional um, flight modes. So I'll take off and cue stabilize. And then when I'm ready to go forward, I flick switch seven. Um, and so for instance, on my transmitter, I take off and cue stabilize, which is my position one. And when I wanna go to, f to forward flight, I move this switch. Uh, oh, it's already down. So it was it was already down. But so it's Q stabilized, and then this switch overrides it, and it goes to forward flight. So now, the, even though it's still in Q stabilized here, this switch is overriding it. And if I switch it back, now Q stabilized takes effect again. And similarly with manual. Now, 
And there are some tricks. So if I start off in fly-by-wire A and I want to go to manual, well, I can just flick it into manual, but fly-by-wire A is still on. So it's best to remember to turn that off and you'll still be in manual. The reason is that when you want to go back to forward flight, you might want to, I'm sorry, when you want to go back to VTOL, you might want to go back into fly-by-wire A first. So you're going to flick it back down. Now you're in fly-by-wire fly by A, you turn off manual, and then you can transition to Q-stabilize by turning off fly-by-wire fly A by turning that switch off. Anyway, that's that's some technicalities that you need to kind of make sure you're comfortable with before you take off. So for instance, you can come here, you can go to the data screen, you can make sure you understand how um, your modes are working. So here you can see I'm in Q loiter, I'm in Q stabilize, I can flick a switch and it'll go to fly, wire, fly by wire A, I can flick a switch, it'll go to manual. Um, but just make sure you understand exactly how those switches are working uh, and, and in what order you need to switch them before you, you know, go for your flight. Um, there may be simpler ways to do it. This is, this is working for me right now. I'm, you know, I just wanted to kind of update you on the, on the flight modes that I'm using. Um, and I think I pretty much covered everything. So um, if you have any questions, let me know. And uh, best of luck.